Ever wondered how to simulate components that are not normally found within your simulation library? No? That means you're a normal person. Good for you! But for any other weirdos out there, I'm gonna show you how I import my simulation models. So the first thing you wanna do, if you want to import a third party model, is find the model. All you need to look for is the name of your component, in this case 1N4004, and Spice Model. Will this work for your LD Spy simulator? Well it should. All modern day simulators are based around the Spice computer language. So it doesn't matter if you're using LT Spice or P Spice or whatever, all the models should work for all the simulators. So we find our model on the website of a known manufacturer. We have here P Spice model. We'll just take this one. It automatically downloaded, and if we open it using Notepad or whatever, so this is a simple text file. We see some copyright information and names of the people who made it, when it was made, and the model itself. So how can we use this model? Well, there's multiple ways. First off, we can simply place it into our simulation. I'm making here a simple simulation in which I will pass a current ramp into a diode to see its voltage to current characteristic. So I will start from 0 amps, go up to I don't know, 5 in a one second time frame and now I have my model I copy it and first way of introducing it into my simulation is by using spice directive simply paste it in here throw it into my simulation and now I need to give my diode this name so if I click on the diode I don't have it in my list the 4004 is not here so how do I include it? Well, simply I copy the name and then I edit the D field and I insert the name of the model into my simulation. Now if I run it, run for one second time, I can look at how my voltage rises in contrast to my time or I can change it to reflect the current. So with rising current, so does the voltage. Okay, what other ways are there to insert this model into the simulation? First, let's just comment this so it doesn't bother us. Well, we can use the include statement. What is the include statement? Well, let's look in the help file. We see that it's a spice directive that is useful for including library files. You can simply include it, use it like this, so dot inc name of your library, and it will look under this path for all the library files and include everything. You can include libraries from the web or you can include them from any other place on your computer using a complete path. So let's try doing this. So I copied my library file here into my LT Spice folder in the documents and I will copy it into the sub file under the library file. I will take the name, simply copy. And now if I go back into my simulation, I will write the Spice directive to include my library file placing it in here and now if I simulate simulation works just as well as before my old model has been commented so I'm using this include directive to include my library into my simulation okay are there any other ways of including it well there's one more important way that I find quite useful if I go onto my diode and pick a new diode I still cannot find the diode I'm using and I want to make it available for further use so how to do this well we need to edit the library file in which LT Spice keeps all of the diodes. So we go back here into the library file, go under the CMP folder, and here we have the standard.dio file. Again, we open this with a text editor, notepad. No, we don't open it with a notepad. We open it with a different file. We will use wordpad. It's a bit better at displaying content. Now we have all of the models that the Spice Simulator knows about, all of the diode models. We can simply include our new model into this list. So I will copy the model from the library file and include it here at the beginning. Now it looks, looks a bit different than all the others, so let's just make some minor corrections on it. I will simply call it 1N4004, no RL, 
this D here is important since it tells us that it's a diode and all of the parameters I will just include after the first line. Save the file. The library file did not update yet so for this I need to close my program and then reopen it. First thing is I save my simulation, close it and then reopen. Go to my previous simulations, also comment this statement, no longer need it. Now if I go onto my diode, right clicking on it, pick a new diode, in my list the very first component is the new 1N4004. So I can simulate using this diode now. Now the exact same process can be used for transistor models also. The only difference comes when we need to import something a bit more complicated. For example, an integrated circuit. Let's say we want to add an operational amplifier. Let's look for the NE5532 op amp. It doesn't have to be from manufacturer, it can be from somebody else. So here, this is a blog and they have the simulation model here. So let's just copy this simulation model. Should be good, but who knows. And again, we have the exact same options using this model. We can either add it as a comment and then use the symbol for this op amp from the op amp folder and go under op amp 2. This is the one with the supply rails also added. Here, if I change the name of my op amp to the one in the model, so any 5532, let's just simply see if simulator will like it. Simulator likes it. There's no error coming from importing this model, so it works. So another way of doing this is to take our simulation model, copy all of it and create a new library file. Under the my documents LT Spice library and sub path. So here simply create a new text document, call it any 5532.library yes i am fully aware of what i'm doing and include our model save it and now again we comment the previous inclusion and just if i simulate it will tell me it doesn't find the model so it doesn't know about it the simulator does not know about the model by default so i need to include the model any 5532.library now if i simulate Again, the simulator knows about the new library. But what happens if we have a non-standard component? For example, we looked at diodes, transistors are the same, op amps. But what if we have a model for a component that doesn't really fit a standard symbol? For example, we want to include CD4051 analog multiplexer. More unorthodox component. We look for a library for it. Again, try to find the spice library. Well, this is the closest thing we have to that. We find something. Let's hope this is good. So we have our new library file. Let's simply copy it into our subcategory list. Now we have a problem. This library, if we look at it, has quite a lot of pins and we don't have a symbol for this thing. So how to create a simple symbol? Well, first thing, we need to open our new library file. So we need to go under the path where it's saved. We need to select all types of files. Look at our latest additions. And open it. We see here a netlist editor and receive our subcategory. So this library file is not a basic model, it's a subcategory comprised out of other basic models. Click on our name, right click it and create a symbol. Yes, I want to automatically create a symbol for this. And now the simulator has created for me a generic symbol with all of my pins. If I don't like how the symbol looks, I can simply edit it. So I have in my draw menu lines and rectangles and so on. So I can work with this. I can move the pins around. Maybe I like it like this, but that's not. And I just save it. Now if I go back to my simulation and if I want to add my new component, I simply go to the components menu and look under auto generated. This is where LT Spice usually saves 
the new auto-generated symbols. So I click my new component and include it into my circuit. And this is the symbol that we just saw a moment ago. So if I modify this and save it, then my symbol in my schematic will also be modified. Thank you for watching. Hope you got some useful information out of this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments and see you next time. Bye bye.